Okay. Today, we're going to do something kind of fun. I take it for granted. Uh, I got to put a bale of hay in. It's no big deal to me. Here's what we're going to do. This is my main chore tractor, actually. It's a 1947 Farm All H. Uh, it says Super H on it, but it's not. It's, a, it's just an H with a trip bucket. It's got front end loader with a trip bucket. It's a pretty vintage loader on an old tractor. Uh, got nice tires here, though. Um, we'll show you how it operates. These ain't for everybody. I grew up on the darn things, and I'll tell you more about that here in just a minute. So let me get up on this, old girl. It's pretty easy. you got to come in from the rear. You grab the wheel. Get up there somewhere. Never leave your tractor in first gear. You can't get by the shifter. If that's in first, it's hard. Well, it's hard for me to climb to it. So you leave it in reverse, which is right there. Now, if you'll come around here, and I'll show you where everything is. This right here is the throttle. Right here. You know what this is. Where's your horn? <laughs> me, me. Okay, ignition switch. This is my choke rod. This ain't factory equipment. When I got the tractor, it didn't have a choke. So I just put that on there. Here's your start button. So... You kind of know how all that works, so I'm going to go ahead and start that, and you can watch. And, uh, oh, let me show you something about these brakes. Uh, you got two brake pedals. You farmer boys know all this stuff, and I know it, so uh, I'm just showing, sharing this stuff for the people that haven't run things like this. If you want to turn to the right and you've got a load on, this steering doesn't want to work good because that loader weight... That kind of makes that front end lock up. So if you're turning right, you step on that right brake. That locks this wheel up. That helps drag your front end around. If you want to turn left, you go this way, step on the left brake. Drags it to the left. There's a, a lot of weird things going on at the same time. This lever over here, that's what lifts my, I pull that out. That lifts my uh, uh, loader. It's got this little knock, shove it in, that holds it. Push it in, it goes down. So the whole trick is you get that little notch right there when you get where you want. This lever here trips my broad bucket, no hydraulics. The only thing it's got is lift cylinders. This trips my bucket. You'll see how that works when it runs a darn thing here in a minute.
what we're doing now is Cohen's cutting the wrap off the bale, and he's got to open the gate. Well, you can't see it, but I got to go to the right of the water trough and to the left of that gate post right there. It's right behind Cohen right now. Now, this pasture is very muddy, but these are pretty good old tractors. I'm going to try to get the hay up back, uh, and we're just going to see what happens. Uh, uh, these old farm miles will keep you just a bit busy, believe me. Just awaiting. Jack right there, 55 year old donkey. Okay, something neat about these. These old tractors like this, if they don't go in first, you try it second. If you go go in second, you hit third. This has only got five gears. This mud's pretty muddy. So let's give that theory a little try. How's that? Okay, we're gonna try it in third gear now. You'll probably see him work them uh, brakes like you were saying earlier a little bit. Of course, the, the mule wants to get right in the way. <laughs> he's, a, he's not scared of nothing. Let's we'll see if this old girl can uh, get up in here. Come on now. We're gonna change up another gear. See the tire spinning individually there. Kind of, kind of working around. This is a pretty muddy day. Dig the trench. <laughs> it's mud season. <laughs>
farm all mud bug. <laughs> season baby Cheer him on, here we go. <laughs> We've had a lot of rain around here in the last few months, turning this whole pasture into oatmeal. Could be just messing around. They understand why I don't just drop and go. We're in light, a little bit of light rain right now. This is clay and mud. Got my call and help me. Yeah, Willie, that's a mule. He's gonna get the hay first, as always. Clean up the deal here before we leave the pasture. So he's gonna scrape a little bit off of there and make sure uh, I can get back in here the next time. <laughs> so, gonna clean up a few things. The little tractor is pretty handy for this kind of stuff, believe it or not. That's a trip bucket, so when he pulls that rod, that thing just goes swinging down as long as there's weight in there. You gotta be an octopus to run these things, I'll tell you that. Those 
trips over and then you just bring her back down. And then it'll latch itself back in. Off we go. getting some jack treats up there. Jack don't like to eat with everybody else. He's an old man. He gets his own little special feeding regimen. Okay, this old apple tree here. You know what actually makes apples? These horses and mules are funny. What a hat, What they do is uh, if they hear an apple hit the ground, they come running and grab it. You'll never find an apple laying on the ground under this. Uh, this cherry tree right here, I got to cut that. That's bad. That's one of them we're going to be cutting. Barb's up there haking, getting some hay for that old donkey. She uh, wants him to enjoy himself. And we got this tree here. Oh, there's Jack. Where you going, Jack? Old donkey. I got to cut this tree. This is a bad one. It's hard to see with this light, but this is a dead tree. I'm afraid of wedging that. I'm probably going to do it. I'm going to drop it right up through there where the other wood is. That's a dangerous tree, but we're going to cut that here. If it quits raining, that's the one thing it's got to do is quit raining. And uh, I think we lost the tripod. Big ruts. This is my life. Yeah, can't get rid of the mud. You know the one bad thing about this pasture? We got a spring right over here, another one right over there. And uh, all it does is keep surfing, servicing. Barb, say hi to YouTube. Hey. <laughs> I zoomed out so far you couldn't see, could you? <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, we're going to try to finish this up. Uh, there's things I, I want to tell you guys a neat little story. Now... There's a lot of you farm boys out there that understand this, and there'll be a lot of city people out there that probably won't, and then there's going to be the rest of you. And you're the firewood guys and the loggers and uh, the people who work for a living. Hi, Tin Man. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Bugged. Um, these old tractors like this, uh, this farm all, isn't for everybody to run. Uh, actually, I haven't never had Cullen on this, have I? No. You've done the road to, you drove David Brown, though. He told me I didn't have enough arms to run everything at once. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you got your hands full, you That's know, you all your an feet. And you, you're really busy running these. But not only that, you screw up, you're off the back of these. I'm going to tell you that. 
Well, that ain't so bad if you're going forward, but just imagine if you're plowing in about third gear, if you can. Yeah. These will pull, these will pull two bottom plows. Sometimes you can pull three if you're shallow, but they'll pull two all day long. They're, they're a nice little tractor. Now, I'll tell you what I started running. It was one of these, 10 years old, but it was a Super M. And uh, I'll tell you what happened. They had an old F uh, model farm all up there, and uh, it was hand crank only. It was on steel, and I'd watch them crank that, and I had to retard the ignition. You guys that play with them know how to start them. And they told me I could run tractors when I was old enough to start that, or big enough to start that uh, old uh, hand crank farm all. So I'd go out there once in a while, and I always set up beside the barn and shed, and I'd wheel all of they get to giggling and laughing. I'll tell you what happened. One day I started that. Yeah, I did. I was 10. Make me lift hay bales and milk and pails. You get strong enough to do it after a while. Uh, so, they put me on a Super M. Now, it's a little bigger tractor than this, but... I remember at the time, they had me hauling empty hay wagons that summer. I wore a hay wagon with a little bit of hay in it, because you had to be able to downshift and stuff. Well, to run this, I had to grab the wheel, I had to jump on the floorboard, push the clutch in, get it in the next gear, or step on the brakes. Whenever I needed to do something, I had to get off the seat. My grandmother seen that, she threw a fit. You know what their answer was? They bolted four by four blocks to the clutch pedal and the brake pedals. And they moved the seat up as far as they could. Then I could run it. Well, it went on a few years. And uh, I'm getting where I'm pretty good at the farm all shift going uphill with a loaded hay wagon. You know what that is, guys. You crack your throttle back just a bit, get it in the next gear, and bring your throttle right back up. That's how you shift these old things. They weren't designed to shift on the fly, but you could do it. Now, if you had to downshift, which you never had to, but if you did, you would go the opposite. You would, just like double clutching. Now, you guys drive drive truck, the older trucks especially know what double clutching is. And it's raining like crazy. That's why I couldn't get where I wanted to with the hay. Normally, I could just wade up through there. Yeah, it's pretty greasy up there now. So what happened was, I'm hauling hay wagons, and uh, we had... Uh, we had a barn, just on, it was called a Sobel Place, up on Bush Hill, out of Kansas City, New York. A lot of you guys know where that is. That uh, surprising number you guys watch, I'm surprised. Um, Red Hill, it was a long hill, kind of went down around. Uh, it's red clay. My Uncle Eldon told me, he says, now Harvey Paul, he says, we're putting hay in the Sobel Place, and it's, they're calling for rain. Now, if that starts raining, don't go down Red Hill. He said, just park the hay wagon off the side of the road. And there's room. Okay. He didn't have to explain why. I kind of had it figured out. So, I started not... Uncle Dwayne was sitting down in front of the barn by this old place. He was hauling uh, square bales. And uh, he was waiting for me. I, I stopped at the top of the hill. And he'd mostly just come on eight. I, I, he knew what he was talking about. Yeah, getting rained out pretty good now. So what happened was, and he held his hand up too. So I put it in second gear. I eased down over there. And I'll tell you what, one wheel started to turn one way and one the other. I broke traction. And I've got 210 hay bales. Uh, and they weren't light on this wagon, this kicker wagon. Well, you know what happens next. You jackknife, flip the tractor, and there you're gone. So, I did the farm all shift, and I got that up in third gear, and as fast as I got it in third, I had to shift to fourth. I missed fourth. I missed it. Okay, hay wagon behind me. This old tractor is in neutral, going like crazy. Now, this, this is the kind of family I come from. If you, you got tougher, you died. That's what happened. Um, it was, uh... Oh, probably eighth of a mile from the bottom of Red Hill on dead level to the barn on the Sobel place. My Uncle Dwayne standing out front to help me unload the hay. 
I don't know how fast that is going, people, but when I went by Uncle Dwayne, it was just like a streak. I was flying, probably 50 mile an hour. Not joking, not, not at all. Tractors are neutral, and there wasn't enough brakes in the world to stop me. My Uncle Dwayne on the way past goes, hey, where are you going? Way I went, I coasted a half mile down the hill, and it starts back up. Well, I got right on the brakes, and I stopped that darn tractor. Finally, got to stop. Well, there's this little road off in the hay field that I went ahead and uh, whipped that tractor around. Uncle Dwayne started walking because he figured what I'd do is after that wild ride, I'd. Uh, I wouldn't be driving that tractor around that hay field. I didn't bother me none. I put it in second gear and rolled right around the hay field, come back up on the road. Met him. Well, he jumps. You you got a, a, a tongue back here. You just jump right up onto. And he jumped right up on there, and he rode back. Well, I was shaking like leaf. I said, Uncle Dwayne, I said, I can't, I can't back this tractor in there. He said, don't worry about it, I'll get it. I says, how come you was picking on me when I was flying by? And he said, well, he said, if you're, it was going to kill you, it would have done it right on Red Hill. But he says, it didn't. He says, somehow you gathered that thing up. And he said, I was going to warn you, don't try to hit forth with that tractor. I forgot it. He said, you can't get it. He says, you can the 400, but not that Super M. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, when they're going that fast, they get to bouncing. Oh, yeah. So I learned something there. So little things like this. I said at the time that when I got older, I was never going to own one of these, ever. Do you know how many times I said I was never going to do, and I found out later in life that it's the best thing for me? There's a lesson learned, isn't it? Best thing for me. This tractor will not fail me. I can fix it with some fence and wire, a pair of pliers, and a bent screwdriver. I can make this run. Yep, sure can. It's uh, These are a crude, old, simple tractor that will never fail you. Uh, this tractor was totally rebuilt about 12 years ago. I ended up with it. The old man did it died. Uh, he done a good job. He majored the motor, rear ends, put brand new tires on it. Yeah, I had, this wing was painted up brand new when I got it. And uh, I was happy to get it. Okay, people, it's Sunday. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. It's raining like heck. I got to get out of here. Goodbye.